Ну, пора стартовать. Спасибо всем, кто пришел на нашу дискуссию. У нас сегодня завершающий разговор про счастье на нашем форуме. В эти три дня в этом зале проходили разные дискуссии по поводу, на тему счастья. Это было и счастье на уровне государства, счастье на уровне организации. И очень символично, что завершаем мы этот цикл личным счастьем. А для того, чтобы поговорить про вопросы э, счастья человека и о том, что уже знает современная наука о влиянии на счастье, можно ли его приумножать и как, э, мы пригласили потрясающих спикеров. Это, во-первых, Кен Шелдон, профессор психологических наук в университете Миссури, доктор социальной личностной психологии. Это человек, один из 20 самых цитируемых психологов мира. Это Дмитрий Леонтьев. Дмитрий Леонтьев, заведующий Международной лабораторией позитивной психологии личности и мотивации Национального исследовательского университета Высшей школы экономики. Владимир Яковлев, очень любимый многими коллегами, многими людьми в России человек, основатель проекта «Возраст счастья», проекта «Яковлев по понедельникам», журналист и медиа-менеджер. Здравствуйте. И Макс Катков, основатель школы коммуникации Макса Каткова, эксперт по работе поведенческих нейросистем, нейроналадчик уровня счастья, человек, который заземляет различные научные исследования на эту тему, на э, жизнь конкретных людей, как на уровне личных консультаций, так и масштабных тренингов. Добрый день. Итак, что такое счастье и как его достичь? Вопрос, который задавался, который задавался э, тысячелетиями, и за последние э, несколько десятков лет мы продвинулись в решении этого вопроса больше, чем, пожалуй, за предыдущие там, тысячелетия, тысячелетия истории человечества. И первый вопрос – это Кену Шелдону. Скажите, пожалуйста, вот ваши большие исследования на тему счастья, какие основные выводы вы сделали, какие же все-таки факторы влияют на состояние счастья человека? Please. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be here to tell you a little bit about happiness research. Um, what I hope to do is explain some of the basic ideas that we use as researchers very quickly and provide a language that we can use to have our conversation. Um, so let me begin by raising the question is it possible to become happier than one already is? Is there a translation? No. No. Does... Коллеги, нет почему-то перевода у нас. Сейчас, сейчас все организуем, сейчас все сделаем. Окей. Я могу перевести пока. Да, давайте пока. Так, я тогда начну, с вашего позволения, переводить. Кен Шелдон собирается рассказать Years ago, a researcher named David Licken claimed that trying to become happier is like trying to become taller. It cannot work. Uh, who, who was it? David Licken? Uh, 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 Licken researcher. Oh, the translation is going. Ah, uh, 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 okay. I'm not hearing it. Is it on? I shouldn't hear it. My own trans. I... No. <laughs> Should I keep talking? Yeah, please. Okay. Um, so, trying to become happier is like trying to become taller, said David Licken. It cannot work. 
and the reason he said this is because of his research on twins. If you take two identical twins and separate them at birth, and they are raised by different families or in different countries around the world, and then you give them a happiness questionnaire, and then you correlate their scores, they correlate very highly, 0.7 or more. So even though they have never met each other, they lived very different lives, they are very similar in their happiness scores. So David Licken said, this means that happiness is genetic and you can't do anything to affect it. Um, so some of us did not like that idea and we uh, looked at the data and we realized that it's true, half of happiness is genetic. Uh, if you were born as a grumpy baby who cried a lot, you could not be a happy, uh, you would stay that way for your whole life. But if you were born as a happy, cheerful, laughing, smiling baby, you would stay that way for your whole life. But um, there's more to it than that because uh, even though the twin scores are very correlated, they're not identical. And that means that there's room to take action in our lives to affect our happiness scores. Very quickly, how do we measure happiness? Simple, uh, it's how good do you feel and how not bad do you feel? How, how positive is your mood? Are you smiling? Are you laughing? Are you cheerful? Or are you grumpy and anxious and depressed? And we measure those by self-report. And uh, what we find is that there's a lot of variation in those things and that what people do makes a big difference in those scores. So a lot of the research that we do is to try to predict that variation. What makes somebody happy and somebody else less happy? And there's many different theories of what are the right values, the right goals, the right beliefs, the right kinds of social relationships, many different theories, no time to talk about them. So I just want to say a couple of things that I know for sure. <clears throat> happy people are, are people who are engaged in goals and projects that are interesting and exciting and meaningful to them. They are active in life and they are trying to do things and they're trying to make things happen uh, and it's their own free choice. So happy people are, are like that. Number two, happy people want to help others. It's not just for themselves. They want to make other people happy as well. And they can't be happy if the people around them aren't happy as well. So number two. Number three, happy people try to be moral. They try to be good people. And we, we all think that we're good, but uh, some of us are not as good as we think we are. It's, it's a, a very important ideal to strive to be a good person. So what we have discovered is not surprising. Uh, it's what your grandmother told you. Be a good person, do things that matter to you, that are meaningful to you, uh, try to help other people, and you will get the reward of being a happy person yourself. So I'll stop there for now, and maybe we can uh, add to those ideas later on. Thank you. Спасибо. We decided uh, to have this discussion in a special way so that we didn't have too many speakers, but we would like each speaker to elaborate on uh, what they think. And now we'd like to give the floor to Dmitry Leontiev. So what do you think from scientific point of view? What are the factors that a human being can affect? Uh, he I guess uh, I uh, can say the same, uh, uh, just uh, I might repeat what Ken said, uh, but try to use different words. Uh, happiness became quite fashionable. On the one hand, it's quite good that uh, this subject uh, became fashionable, because, uh, you know, we got used uh, to uh, 
look differently at uh, happiness because we n never really had a high esteem of happiness. We never thought much about it. And maybe this caused a lot of problems for this country, for our culture. Uh, and uh, we sometimes uh, uh, try not to pay attention on certain things. Uh, you know, the most important thing is to survive, whereas uh, it's very important to live a happy life. And these ideas have become um, important quite recently because it really helps to increase the value of life. And of course, it's uh, extremely important for us. The more we value life, the more we value people that surround us, the better life we'll have. But I'm concerned uh, about happiness being an object in itself, because happiness is uh, emotion. First of all, it's a diversity of different emotional states that a person can have. And the emotions are signals. They signal us about different things that happen in our life. So happiness, just like any other emotion, tell us what happens in our life. Because happiness is when we realize that our life is almost uh, ideal. It's very close to the ideal uh, uh, perception of life, and that's when we feel happiest. Actually, it uh, might be even dangerous, because sometimes we uh, happiness uh, get, uh, uh, makes us uh, not want anything. You know, we get rid of uh, motivation if we become too happy. But fortunately, we cannot uh, be happy all the time. But anyway, it's a signal that tells us about reality, about our life. If we strive uh, to feel happy, um, then it means that we'll try uh, to uh, get signals instead of understanding what it signals. We try to make sure that the barometer shows the good weather instead of protecting from bad weather. So we can make adjustments to this barometer and feel happy. We might be satisfied with what we hear on TV, that we live well instead of living really well. So the most reliable method of feeling blissful state is using certain famous chemical substance, but I'm not going to advertise them. So if you take those chemicals, uh, uh, you know, the people that take them uh, feel happy uh, and everything is fine, uh, uh, but this is uh, the feeling that they get, uh, but they sacrifice their real life. So happiness is a signal that mm, something is going well in our life, something is uh, um, right, and uh, it makes us uh, focus more on uh, how we live and we'll feel happy naturally if we can control life and if we move uh, uh, in the right way when we approach uh, the state of happiness uh, as much as possible. So this emotion depends on us to a certain extent. Uh, um, uh, sometimes it doesn't uh, depend on us. Uh, you know, something can make us happy, something can uh, um, uh, satisfy our um, dreams or desires. Sorry about this noise. There are different uh, states uh, that we can have. For example, a, a small child is happier than the adult because the child has uh, simple desires and so the adults can satisfy child's uh, desires easily and make him happy. But to a great extent, the child is responsible for his happiness. Adults have more problems, have uh, a lot of uh, variation between the desires and uh, what they have. But adults also have more opportunities to form their life and move towards happiness. Of course, ex expectations play a very important role. Uh, and uh, what we compare our state to in order to identify whether we are happy or not. So the initial um, level can be quite basic. You know, we want uh, to live in peace. We don't want war. But uh, um, uh, 
as long as we become wealthier, as long as our level of well-being becomes higher, uh, our demands are growing and expectations are growing. And that's why we don't really get any closer to what we desire. The distance remains the same. And this is what is called uh, a, a hedonistic uh, running way. Uh, it means that we are running on this uh, uh, path, but we don't really move anyway, because even though our life becomes better, uh, we are still um, uh, have uh, more demands, and that's why we all must stay in the same place. And this is a very important principle that has been proved by research. The most reliable uh, way uh, to, be, uh, to be unhappy is to compare your state with others. If you compare yourself with others, then these people are unhappier as compared to those people that have their own internal criteria, their own internal standards, uh, uh, and uh, those people that do not compare themselves with others. And I think another important point is uh, is uh, having a comprehensive approach to what makes us happy. Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, an American psychologist, uh, suggested uh, this approach in his uh, theory about flow. He studied uh, specific kind of happiness that we generate ourselves. You know, there is a Russian saying that uh, a, per, um, a person is a master of uh, his own happiness. So this psychologist studied uh, many people and uh, their professional life uh, or social activities uh, and how they reach the state which uh, makes them forget about anything in the world. They forget about themselves. So he formulated a range of conditions. But anyway, the optimal condition uh, is uh, generated uh, in the state of involvement when we are really engaged in something. And uh, this is what uh, gives us positive emotions. But that's not all. It's only part of it. It also gives us a lot of meaning. And what is meaning? It's the connection with others. It's about how the society lives, the humanity, and the universe overall. So it's important to feel this connection with others. And the final component, the third component, is the effort that we take so we are the reason of everything that happens. We can affect the events. We are responsible for our life. Without the efforts, we cannot uh, have. Re we cannot uh, be responsible for our life. We try uh, to do our best in order to reach the results, and then we can reach a point where we can become happy, at least for some time, and then we move on further. Thank you. Thank you, Dmitry. So from what we have heard, um, we heard uh, several important factors of happiness. So this is directly linked uh, with what that happiness uh, is emotions. Involvement, uh, helping to others, uh, this is important. And also efforts uh, and achievements. Uh, so these are very important uh, words. If, for example, we uh, take into account one of the um, most important uh, researchers of happiness, Martin Selinger, uh, he uh, thought about happiness as involvement, uh, efforts, and uh, achievements. But also there is one more. In 
ingredient, relationships with people and social connections. And here at the forum, uh, there was Dan Burtner, and I think many of, uh, of you have heard um, his speech, his uh, statements, and he uh, spoke about warm uh, relationships with uh, uh, relatives as uh, the main component of those people who live alone. Vladimir Yakovlev, I would like um, to ask you this question. You had an empirical way, you researched uh, uh, this and asked people who live long life um and they have a full, nice, uh, good life uh, in spite of their age, old age. What are the common factors uh, which people, with these people have? What make them happier? So, you know, first of all, um, I would like um, to say, first of all, that I uh, hate happy people. I can't be a happy people. I don't uh, tolerate them because, uh, you know, happy people are artificially invented uh, to ruin all our life and pleasure. Because uh, in this case, uh, if I don't know about these happy people, I can get pleasure from life. But if I can see a happy person and then somebody says to me, he is happy and you are not happy, I just lose all pleasure from my life. And it seems to me. Uh, that the idea of happiness by itself uh, ruins our lives very strongly. And speaking about uh, people who live um, alone uh, lives, I met them a lot because I went around the world and I, you know, saw li like 200 uh, uh, of them uh, and uh, they had long lives, but still uh, they feel very well and they are very pleased with their lives. So they're, uh, and I could not understand why they are so pleased. Why? What makes them so happy? You are 80 years old, for example, and you are not so happy health already uh, so life is not so so not so much uh, time left but a person still is uh, you know joyful cheerful and so on and I asked them what is your secret and practically uh, very often they don't have money at all practically and um, the most um, pleased person, uh, uh, he uh, and uh, the happiest one, he lives on $200 per month in Tel Aviv in Israel, and he's really very happy. And then I found out uh, the secret. The secret is that um, they uh, never reach, never try to reach happiness. Uh, they don't uh, try to be happy. They just get uh, pleasure uh, from life they have. And also uh, they get this uh, in a very interesting way. So if, for example, he has this desire, uh, he, for example, is eager to go to the cinema. He goes to the cinema because he respects his wish, his desire. But if he comes to a cinema and the cinema talks is closed uh, so he also respects uh, this fact that it is closed and he goes back and he starts uh, to do something else and for me uh, this was really a discovery because as to me for my whole life I always thought that happiness only comes uh, through you know satisfaction of your wishes and desires and my life um, is um, like this uh, that before 30 years old uh, I uh, tried to satisfy all my wishes Seriously speaking, so I became rich. I had uh, really uh, a lot of money. I became famous. I uh, started my company. I had power, and uh, I was so miserable, you know. And uh, I felt uh, really um, crappy. And then uh, when I was 53, I became 53. I became broke, and I lost everything. Broke, and I lost everything which I had. And then, to my great surprise, the quality of my life life became better and I started to live with greatest pleasure and uh, much uh, more pleasure I got from my life than earlier and then I realized um, that um, if, for example, I ask someone, for example, one of you, uh, do you know what will happen to you tomorrow? Uh, can you influence on this? 
And uh, then how can I say to myself that I want to be happy tomorrow? And I understood uh, that really uh, the uh, thing is not in happiness, but in this, uh, you know, in the ability to accept your life uh, as it is, as it comes to you in a natural way. Because I want, um, uh, to, to I, I can try to do something, to achieve something, and we all know uh, that uh, uh, to achieve achieve uh, something sometimes is not possible and uh, sometimes we just fail or um, uh, you know we get something very different from what we tried uh, to achieve and that's why in my view there is no any happiness in life but uh, there is this integrity so ability to accept your life as it is as it comes to you uh, and uh, to respect your wishes uh, and uh, also whether they are realized or not whether they are fulfilled or not and in this case um, very strange ability in this case capability comes to you and uh, it means um, that you understand that your life uh, and you know, lives of others uh, is very individual and you cannot compare your life uh, with um, some somebody else's life uh, you cannot control your life and that's why life of everybody is really like a work of art uh, and it cannot be repeated because uh, it happens because of your individual interaction with your world there are no, no two this uh, you know the same days uh, the same weeks and the same lives and then you start um, uh, your life without any alternative scenarios you don't say how it should be you say how it is and that's fine and that's very important um, uh, and this is very good um, uh, to live without happiness So uh, there is no, uh, you know, happiness, but there is some, uh, you know, uh, pleasure from um, uh, so the life you live. Uh, uh, so uh, you have um, a, a lot of experience with uh, people who are convinced uh, that they are unhappy. So please tell us. Uh, so you have uh, so many, so much practical work. You have worked, uh, have been working already for 18 years. 18 years. So for 18 years you have been working with people. Uh, in, and uh, you also um, use uh, some leading, uh, you know, global developments in life. Uh, what system can you see? What um, what do you see? The measurement of my work is some kind of delta uh, change in the state um, and uh, in the feelings uh, of some particular of a particular person with whom I work. I work with people in groups or individually. And for me, uh, happiness uh, is a very complicated word because it's a noun, but it seems to me like a verb or maybe an adjective, not like a noun. Uh, uh, happiness is not uh, like an object, some point where you can come. And uh, this noun um, confuses people because it's like a real estate which you should find and then buy, and then you can be there, stay there. But if we see happiness as a verb, we uh, can, um, you know, make it we can do this and if it's an adjective we can think about it whether i can do this where whether i can communicate with this uh, person happily whether i can cook uh, a fried eggs happily for example and this becomes your personal already product a derivative of your life and this experience of 18 years of consultations uh, uh, is valuable and um, now i can see that there are six uh, key elements uh, uh, because um, uh, you know, uh, these six elements uh, distract people from being happy, and these, these six elements also, uh, you know, help people uh, become uh, happier. Uh, so a person consists of two parts. Uh, uh, there is consciousness um, in psychology, we know this, uh, and consciousness, uh, there is a set of concepts and needs and demands, and this can make him happy. But still he has some uh, striving for something. And then, uh, you know, um, unconsciousness unconsciousness uh, this is the brain a set of neuro uh, network uh, which work and our life is defined mostly by a set of these neuro networks if i have this neuro network or neuro machine which always remembers that <coughs> uh, can you hear when i speak uh, 
in, uh, so if you have this neuro machine and it remembers always focuses always on unpleasant moments of our life it also produces an unpleasant state and this happens automatically and I can uh, demand anything from you and sub and uh, you know I try to control myself my consciousness but this control is not enough because when I'm distracted or I'm tired the brain will do what he uh, is meant um, uh, to be and I have six main neuro machine which distract people from uh, happiness uh, first of all stress uh, and the uh, tension and uh, it's uh, quite difficult to be happy when you are tensed or overstressed so secondly this is uh, these are fears when uh, we uh, really worry a lot about something we have anxiety we uh, you know anticipate something bad and we have uh, very painful emotions uh, thirdly this is seriousness uh, neuro machine which uh, uh, you know usually we have uh, from the high education you know and uh, then we have uh, you know too many goals people have uh, very precise goals and in, in uh, the life and it makes him also unhappy because when we have this very clear goal it's very easy to not to achieve it and it's very easy to uh, notice some other opportunities which life can offer uh, then uh, the feeling of um, uh, you know lo uh, lo lonesome uh, so for example you feel lonely and it also does not matter whether you have relatives friends because a lot of people train this ability and they can feel lonely in you know inside even if they are among other people still they can feel lonely it's really trained and uh, so the fifth thing is a habit uh, to always uh, re, re um, so remember this unpleasant feelings and then uh, the the last one uh, you know hesitations uh, a person says yes or no he cannot decide anything he makes a decision but then uh, he worries whether he has to do this or not and then he loses some experience he cannot get experience if we control the six neuro machine if we process them well if we are not distracted by them in this case uh, we can um, be in a quite a neutral state and then uh, from this neutral state we can build a feeling of happiness and this neutral state is already very pleasant and this six neuro machine of happiness which I can see they are not uh, direct contradictions uh, uh, you know uh, so this um, three already neuro machines I already voice participation uh, in lives of others uh, and this is the matter from loneliness because uh, the majority of people think that uh, they need uh, to get some impulse or warmth to uh, communicate with others to start communicate with others but then you can do this without any uh, just uh, uh, feeling uh, you just uh, can start communicate and then you can get a feeling and secondly the second uh, one this is direction not a goal but direction if we choose a direction in this case we are much more interested and here for example like um, uh, tourism or hiking and walking around the city for example if you get a very precise goal in a good uh, uh, place uh, you then lose a lot of opportunities on your way there but if you just intend uh, uh, to do this uh, so on your way there you can also find a lot of interesting places to eat very nice uh, uh, dessert uh, to meet a nice person good person that's the second one direction and then uh, the total focus um, uh, so the state of uh, uh, flow and in my view uh, this is also a trained um a state uh, we can have this total involvement uh, state and we cannot create this uh, you know by force but we can get uh, tr we can train this uh, so total engagement uh, total involvement and then fourth uh, content contact with unconsciousness uh, and with your brains uh, so um, positively you can uh, you know enter into uh, interchanged uh, um, you know um, um, state of your uh, unconsciousness uh, with the help of dance music uh, and uh, some other exercises because of this uh, uh, transformed uh, state of consciousness uh, uh, altered state of consciousness uh, is very important and this is also practical practice then positive mindset and also work at your background mood when every day uh, for one second uh, for one minute we do much more we uh, you know process much more mood better mood than yesterday and we uh, try to focus on pleasant uh, moments uh, worries we train our nervous systems system uh, to feel better and then um, uh, the um, uh, state of high performance uh, the high performance state uh, so in English it's also called you all 
all know the story that our brain can uh, so it uh, weighs uh, two kilos but uh, it can eat 30 percent of sugar and consume a lot of um, oxygen that's why uh, genetically we have inbuilt a lot of um, uh, you know um, uh, protected uh, things for it uh, to work uh, powerfully because uh, in wild nature people did not have uh, so much reserve um, you know Oh, and uh, we, they did not eat so sugar, uh, you know, like we, like us. Uh, that's why now we have uh, this untypical state uh, uh, to think, you know. And thinking is when you feel, for example, inspiration, when you have uh, quite enough attention. And um, in this case, you can cope with life and uh, also to get pleasure from life. This is a very important state also. So these are uh, six uh, neuro machine, uh, machines, and it's, uh, you know, it makes sense uh, to build them. Uh, and uh, there are six uh, sex mechanisms which are behind these practices and if we control something uh, you know and create uh, something else uh, uh, so you know I am not an, uh, a very happy person from uh, nature but it shows that changes uh, can happen and I'm always interested in this um, whether there are some people uh, who changed uh, so much uh, because if happiness is a verb if it's an adjective in this case um, we cannot be happy we cannot uh, become happier and in this case we we can notice that uh, uh, these changes with the help of uh, uh, brain are quite valuable and they can really help to become happier. Thank you very much. I can. Uh, so behind your shoulders, uh, there is a lot of research and uh, um, research base. What is your opinion about um, the fact uh, that happiness, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, can be can become if there are some factors which, uh, you know, if we kill some reasons of unhappiness, will um, we become happy? How do you think? The question is, if we have a. a bad situation in our life, can we still become happy? Is that... I'm not sure I got the question. Не совсем. Макс только что говорил про конкретно... So, Max uh, mentioned several factors that prevent us from being happy. For example, stress uh, or tension or loneliness. So, he explained how you can cope with those factors. So... We can do something to remove these feelings in order to feel happy. So what can you say from your research experience? Do you think if we get rid of these factors, so to say unhappy factors, we'll become happier? Um, I work in the uh, field of positive psychology, which is a part of psychology which is not so interested in solving problems or coping with stress or dealing with trauma. Instead it asks, so, so here is okay. You feel okay. You're neutral. Um, clinical psychology is when you feel bad and the, the goal is to get you back to okay. Um, positive psychology is about getting from okay to great. Um, so I have focused more on this question of how to get from okay to great. And, and one of the things we find is that um, a lot of times if you just start doing new things that are fascinating and in enjoyable and connect you to people and are meaningful, then those problems that you are having, they fall away. You forget about them. So instead of focusing on solving problems, maybe it's better to forget about the problems and start doing something new and exciting. Um, so that, that's my main answer to that question. Yeah. Thank you very much. I have my own interest. I work on the project Healthy Moscow. I'm the advisor to Deputy Minister for Healthcare. You probably saw our stand, Healthy Moscow. And we understand that um, health is closely related to happiness. Because uh, if uh, the person wants to live a long life, he has to have a reason for that. And usually it's about uh, uh, being happy, about uh, feeling joy. So like Mr. Yakovlev said, uh, taking life as a piece of art. So my question is uh, probably for Dmitry Leontiev. 
Do you think that this state, uh, this city, can encourage this state? so that uh, uh, this could help a person to uh, want to live a longer life and to do something about it. Well, I have uh, to divide between health and happiness because they are different things. And for example, even if you cure the person and uh, even if the person doesn't have any disease, he won't necessarily become happy. The monitoring research that have been carried out for 20 years that compare happiness in different cultures in different countries. So they publish this research data and they identified certain regular patterns. So one of the regular patterns that has been discovered, it actually has been proved a lot because we can take any kind of groups, a professional group. We usually see that the person can become happier due to the environment to a certain extent. Only in the poorest countries, the level of happiness depends on money and uh, material well-being. Because if the most basic needs are not satisfied when uh, people are hungry, when they are starved and they can't take care of health, uh, in that case, yes, their level of happiness would increase if those negative factors are removed. Uh, then if we take middle class, and it means that we can have good food, we can take care about health, we can have uh, some exercise, uh, we can have medical aid, we have roof above our hand, we can provide education to our children. So this is um, a level of well-being uh, th that uh, at some point won't affect our happiness. And our happiness will be determined by completely different factors. And they will be individual factors related to our objectives. So what kind of objectives we uh, choose for ourselves, how successful uh, we are in reaching them. Uh, it also related uh, to our social views, our relationships. But uh, this is true about middle class. Uh, about this level of middle class when it becomes our personal thing, our personal project. So it's true, we can um, uh, remove all the negative uh, uh, things, uh, all this unhappiness, and get a certain point. But then it will depend on us. Vladimir. What do you think about the feeling of gratitude? If we develop this state of gratitude, can it help to uh, develop uh, uh, the uh, state that you described? I wanted uh, to share you um, to share a story with you. Once I ran away to Ibiza, this island, and I wanted to live there for some time. In fact, I found out a lot about Ibiza. I tried to live there for some time, but uh, then I failed. I realized, for example, that uh, people that live on Ibiza Island, they are in fact pirates, because this is their first uh, job. But they're very lazy pirates. Piracy is uh, hard work. You have to wake up early. You have to uh, go somewhere um, uh, by the sea. You have to run uh, and uh, chase women. And uh, the pirates of Ibiza Island just would put false beacons during storm time. So they would put these false beacons and they would just get whatever they need in the morning when the waves brought everything to the shore. When I found out about it, I thought about captains. 
I was thinking about the captains of those ships that uh, would uh, um, channel their uh, ships towards those beacons and would just smash, uh, would just crash because it was a stormy time. You can imagine what it's like. So they thought they would uh, uh, try to stick to that beacon. Uh, they would uh, uh, navigate the ship towards that beacon and they would be better. Whereas if they just stayed in that storm calmly, without trying to do anything, they would have a higher chance of survival. And this is what we do in our life. For some reason, life today in Moscow and in Russia is arranged in such a way that uh, I I'm always uh, told that I'm under, let's say, I'm uh, not uh, handsome enough, uh, or I don't wear good clothes, uh, or I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not educated enough, for example, if I go to some publishing houses. If I read a book about happiness, I see that the author wants to say that I'm not happy enough. So we are turning into these captains, into the captains of those ships that are trying to navigate towards a false beacon. We lose a lot of power uh, while trying to get there. But then we realize we don't get what we want. I'm telling you this uh, from my experience, because I have to assure you, I reached a lot of uh, false beacons, and the result was the same. So I think that it's very important to understand that you should go mad about uh, uh, the shortage of happiness. And there is a very simple method to reach happiness. Do you want to reach happiness right now, right here? Tell yourself that what you have is happiness. This is what happiness is like. This is your own happiness. It's great. We have reached this and let's just enjoy it. This is what I, uh, for example, I can tell you, I'm, uh, I'm a jealous person. I envy other people. I lost money now. I don't have a lot of money. I only get salary. And this is my happiness. I can't change it. So let's just be happy. Whatever we have, you know, we did a lot for that. And this is the happiness we earned. Let's live with it. Let's move on and uh, uh, talk about the relationship between health and happiness. So what do you think about stress and tension? They, they are factors of unhappiness, right, for you. So again, what can the city ha do for you? How can this city and healthcare system help to overcome stress? I can say that the opposite thing of stress and tension. Um, but before that, I have to say that relaxation practices is an intermediary step. For example, if I ask people whether they can relax, they say yes, and I ask them to do it, they do like this. So there are certain boundaries uh, for a person when they can relax relax uh, consciously. So the uh, next level is the contact with uh, your subconscious, uh, what we reach uh, when we read uh, or when we do some sports or when we listen to music. It's like an altered uh, state of consciousness. And I was reading the book about these uh, altered uh, states of um, uh, consciousness. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this book says that uh, uh, Americans uh, uh, spend uh, two trillion million, two trillion uh, of dollars uh, of yeah dollars in order to get into this state. So the, uh, there are different spaces for this, uh, uh, the festivals, uh, um, and it's very interesting to see how we 
get deeper into those uh, altered uh, states of consciousness. You know, some companies, for example, create special capsules or some special space where people can feel differently, where they can do some creative work. And probably the same uh, can be done by the state or uh, uh, by the city authorities. But vodka is more accessible. You can get it easier. I want uh, to ask the speakers, do you have questions for each other? I have a question. Can I ask you uh, the question, Max? You know, in the last year and a half, I was writing a book about caring about your brain. So I have written this book. So, And it turned out that what I knew about my brain turned out to be wrong turned out to be false. And I discovered lots of uh, surprising things for me. That's why I wanted to ask you about it. For example, a bad mood. I always thought that we should get rid of, uh, of the bad mood. But it turned out to be that a bad mood is a natural state. First of all, I discovered that there is a small part of the brain I can even say that it's a special organ that uh, is responsible for the generation of bad mood. So its responsibility is to generate this bad mood. It's very natural. Then it's uh, also needed. It's not only natural, but uh, is necessary. Because when you are in a good mood, we try to build some global plans. Whereas if we are in a bad mood, we try to relate it to re the reality. To uh, We take a critical uh, uh, view on what we do. And this makes us uh, make uh, wise decisions. And Mark Salingham that you mentioned uh, was writing about it too. Uh, usually we have uh, uh, good mood twice a day and we have bad mood twice a day. The same is true about fear. Fear is a special system of protection. It protects our brain because we survive due to the, uh, the uh, feeling of fear, uh, because uh, we are food. And fear saved us. And stress is another natural state. If we encounter some difficulties, uh, we have adrenaline, and uh, our brain gives us an opportunity either to flee or to fight. And uh, I'm not going to mention seriousness. For example, I was born a very serious person. I never saw an opportunity to change this in myself. So how could you possibly get rid of the negative mechanisms that you that you described? Thank you. That's a great question. I would like uh, to make several comments. So when we speak about the brain that uh, had a certain evolution, and you know there were hundreds of uh, or thousands of years. Uh, the mechanisms of fear, of bad mood. I can say that uh, the brain that was created was not supposed to live in the environment uh, that we see in our everyday life, because those mechanisms uh, were good for a wild uh, environment because uh, we never uh, there were never t at a time w there was never a time when we had so much sugar there was there were there was never a time when uh, we uh, had uh, a need to build gyms because uh, we never stayed uh, um, at, at a desk for many hours. And I talk to many people that come to me and say that uh, they are obsessed with bad thoughts and uh, then they cannot develop good relationships. They can't do anything interesting for themselves. 
when I speak about the positive mood, I mean an effective state of mind, and it means that the person is interested in certain things, and the person can cope with uh, uh, difficulties and problems. So uh, I don't mean euphoria state. So if we speak about fear, of course, it's uh, the mechanism of survival. Uh, but uh, if the person has elevator phobia, uh, it, you know, it's uh, uh, very strange because uh, we can retrain a per uh, the person's brain. Uh, we can uh, relieve uh, fears related to flying in the airplanes or speaking in public uh, because this uh, can help a person looking for um, things that they want to do. I don't uh, mean to say that you can reprogram yourself as a person or reprogram your brain uh, so that you can turn into an unmovable and happy creature. Uh, I just mean that you can uh, seek and search for uh, things that limit your personality and uh, limit, uh, limit the freedom of uh, uh, your personality. I can see there are some questions from the audience, but I want to ask uh, once again, do you have any questions for yourselves or comments? Okay, let's move on to the questions from the audience. Yes, this lady uh, wearing yellow. Hello. Thank you for such a, an interesting discussion. My question is, uh, for the uh, person who told us about false beacons. First of all, I'd love to thank you for your book, The Age of Happiness. I gave it to my parents and they became much happier. And I became much happier too. So let's say we all became happier because you let us be happy. So I have a question as a young woman under 35. I haven't achieved everything. So you are writing books. I also would like to write books. You had a company. I also would like to have a company. How can you combine this drive and feeling maybe it's too early for me to reach a nirvana state? But it seems to me that you combined everything. I didn't say anything about nirvana, that's for sure because what we have is far from nirvana. And those difficulties uh, that we have in our life are very important because you can't develop without it. All our life is about development. And I do believe in this. If the God exists, he is interested in our development and not about our well-being. That's why we have certain uh, challenges uh, uh, to face, certain difficulties that we come across with in life. And I agree with Marx uh, completely. Uh, the direction is better than the objective because you can't really try to achieve uh, 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 even if you try to achieve the goal, you will have disappointment. It doesn't really depend on us whether we achieve the goal or not. One of the most dangerous things that I know, one of the most, uh, uh, the, the worst things uh, is that uh, you can dream as much as you want. I think it's not true. I think uh, it's harmful uh, to dream uh, because we think that all our dreams should be should become reality and if uh, they are not they haven't become a reality it means i'm a loser but it's a lie uh, the thing is that uh, it doesn't depend on us and there are so many factors that are beyond our control and uh, uh, we know that more often we can't uh, turn our dreams to reality and it happens more often and so uh, this is the reality uh, that we live in you can choose uh, anything you want you can focus on making money or setting up your company or writing a book but you have to know that 
you might succeed or you might fail. And it won't depend just on you. It will depend on many other things. So if you know this, if you are ready for both uh, results, then you will be able to enjoy the process. And you will be able to uh, commensurate uh, the attempts that you invest uh, in these events and activities. Because sometimes a uh, person get uh, too obsessed with uh, their uh, goals and aims. For example, I didn't know about it and, uh, you know, I was bending my head against the wall because I thought if I want this, I have to reach it. No way. So that's why I, uh, I support uh, this idea that you should just move towards a certain direction without uh, fixing on a goal. Okay, so the girl in the first row, please, you, you wanted to ask the question. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Anastasia Vladimir. Uh, please, uh, one minute for the question. Uh, Vladimir, I have a question to you. You are sure in this uh, theory that if you dream about something, it means uh, that maybe you will not achieve this, but I disagree with this. Um, so I will start with this. Um, so before I came here uh, two weeks uh, ago, I, uh, I, you know, I can work with, um, uh, you know, uh, subconscious because I'm also a fan of freight, some consciousness, um, subconsciousness. Uh, so, and two weeks ago, I was thinking uh, that maybe I want uh, to get acquainted with uh, Blue Dance uh, uh, and uh, Irina Hakamada. Yesterday it happened, and I cannot say that some consciousness does not work. I cannot say this because it's it's wrong, uh, because I dreamt about this, I wanted to know them, and now I know these people, and it is proof now. The problem of uh, sosium is uh, the following, because we have stereotypes and some moments um, we have which uh, really um, uh, can be fulfilled uh, through some financial uh, results but uh, that's not this uh, I don't say that subconsciousness does not work at all and I cannot even uh, say for sure whether it's, it works or not uh, whether it whether it exists or not uh, I think that subconsciousness works but uh, you know uh, uh, you know it works but it does not mean uh, that subconsciousness uh, can can really power the whole life, uh, uh, different people, all circumstances, uh, because you are getting prepared uh, for the exam. You spent all efforts uh, for this uh, uh, to to prepare for it, uh, uh, to get ready for this. You pull all efforts, put all efforts, all subconsciousness uh, is ready. But then you come to exam uh, and you fail because the professor did not like you because um, uh, the professor, uh, you know, maybe had a bad, very bad day and. He his wife had the change, had the, you know, cheated on him, or maybe you had periods, and that's why you have a very bad mood. Uh, so you can't control the result, you know, and you cannot control, and uh, also your subconsciousness cannot control the result. Uh, that's why when you start something, it's very dangerous to say that you will achieve this, because then you will uh, you will feel self self uh, guilt, uh, because sometimes you can achieve this, but in some cases you cannot. And if uh, this is the case uh, when you cannot achieve this, and uh, for example you want to be so all powerful, it be it can become really self guilt, and then you can destroy yourself with this. Okay, um, uh, so uh, do you have any questions to Ken? Ken, please. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Angelica. I have a question uh, connected with personal experience. Uh, uh, so, Ken, uh, so maybe also uh, the question is to Vladimir, but also maybe uh, to Ken. So, what is your attitude to the state uh, when you don't do anything? When a person doesn't work uh, and uh, he is in a passive uh, state in some period of time, so, for example, there is uh, such a theory, uh, so you should. Um, Go, um, you should cope uh, with some barriers. I don't remember the author of this uh, theory. Uh, so like the middle of your life, uh, then you should uh, uh, cope with these barriers, like 33 years old, the age of the Christ. And there are different opinions for this. But I don't speak now about the age, not, not about periods of your life. 
but speaking about psychology and working with these uh, states uh, uh, so uh, and uh, uh, so what uh, useful we can uh, extract from this uh, when you go out of the states for example the state of laziness uh, yes and I um, was lazy for the whole year and I have the spirit this uh, so for, for the whole year and uh, this is you know uh, you know I, uh, something happened in my psychology uh, uh, you know during this year of laziness uh, or you uh, you know just uh, give a state uh, not to do anything so laziness uh, is it good when you work at yourself when you choose where to go next and so on that's a very good question interesting question um, first I would ask is there uh, something you're supposed to do that you don't want to and so you don't do it or is there just nothing at all that that you want to do I don't know if you can, well, I'll talk about the two cases. Um, when you do nothing, it might be that you are resentful that there's too much pressure and too much stress and you just don't want to do it and you just do nothing. Or maybe you're just taking a break and you're waiting for new ideas and new inspirations. Um, I like the idea that there should be a universal basic income in the world, that everybody has enough money to live whether they work or not. And I think that would create a more healthy society and economy. Even though some people will choose to do nothing, many other people will have the support they need to do whatever they want. And so it should be our own choice whether to, to take action or not. Um, the research shows that you're more likely to be happy if you're making progress, if you're doing things and making uh, things happen in the world. But for you, maybe that's not what you want to do or, or not you don't want to do that right now, that's okay. Um, I think we should all get that choice. Uh, fortunately, we get bored and we have a natural tendency to look for challenges and find new things to be interested in. So you can't just do nothing for, for your whole life. You have to find things to do, and maybe uh, it takes some time to, to, to do nothing, and then you can discover the new thing that you want to do. Скажите, пожалуйста. Okay, uh, Kian, uh, so let's continue this question. Is it necessary uh, for work um, in a positive psychology uh, to have uh, the will, uh, the willpower? For example, if the person is quite lazy uh, for some year, for a year, for a period of time, uh, can we stimulate this person through some factors with the help of something? Can we make this person more active? Uh, you can't make anybody do anything. Mm -hmm. it's, it's their choice. If you try to make your, your husband or your wife do something, it doesn't work, right? Um, so really we have to create the conditions when people want to do things for their own reasons. And there's a whole theory about how to motivate others that focuses on supporting their autonomy to make their own choices. It's called self-determination theory. Uh, Dimitri and I were at the conference last month in Amsterdam for this theory. 700 researchers were there. A very important idea is to support the autonomy of your children, of your wife, of your employees, uh, to make their own choices. And if you do that, then when they act, they, ha they know it is their choice. And they, they do it because they want to do it. They, but if they feel they're doing it because somebody's making them do it, they feel angry, they feel stressed, they feel annoyed, they feel like they want to stop, and they feel like they want to be lazy. So if we let people discover their own passions, then they will discover them. That's my experience. Thank you very much. Okay, let's uh, give the floor, uh, give the um, floor to our, to the gentleman. Maybe he will ask the question now. But please, one minute for the question. Oh, you know, I would like uh, to change uh, the topic of our subject a little bit. I would like. Uh, 
one minute, uh, Admitri. Uh, so you said uh, that, uh, uh, in my view, it's a key phrase uh, that happy uh, person, uh, happy people are people from the middle class. Uh, uh, so middle class people mostly uh, feel happiness. Uh, did I get you right? No, no, you got me wrong. Because middle class people, this is the level of people when uh, so uh, happiness does not depend on money anymore. Uh, so it means. Um, uh, that uh, so okay I got your own but uh, you know maybe I will ask this my question so look uh, for example middle class uh, people uh, maybe you are over also interested in this uh, people so middle class people uh, they have money but they have um, uh, to get this money and um, in Russia we uh, have rich people uh, and this rich people 11.5 percent what is your question uh, so middle class uh, has 11.5 percent of income and what do you think about this do you think about this uh, is it strategic so middle class is like dragging behind uh, or something uh, so what about well-being of this middle class maybe they are not so of course yes I think about middle class of course Yes, this is my answer. Okay, please, a, a gentleman in the white shorts, I promise to give you an opportunity to ask a question. I have a question to Dmitry Leonsev, or maybe also then to Maria. Uh, what about the idea of Moscow government? Uh, uh, so people go to parks. How, how can Moscow government um, make, ha make happier? For example, people go around the park and then they check uh, uh, the, um, uh, so examine their health and then they find out that they have bad disease. But now, uh, for example, if a person uh, is 50 years old, if we scan him uh, very well, we can and find a minimum 12 diseases. Okay, can I answer this question, Dmitry? Because uh, I have this program. You can uh, beat me after the session. So everything is very simple. We don't have the goal uh, to uh, find serious diseases. Uh, we want to uh, uh, help people uh, to detect problems at an early stage and to make changes in his lifestyle at an early stage. Because now many people uh, die from blood circulation diseases and these diseases are directly regulated by lifestyle. If a person go around park, walk around park, and then uh, uh, he find, finds out that he has obesity or he has um, uh, you know increased blood pressure so you are in the zone of risk and we know you, we can offer you something for example uh, we can offer you to increase physical activities uh, so we can help you and you then you can choose maybe you can choose healthy habits but in Russia we have a very high mortality rate uh, and unfortunately uh, and this is our pain especially men uh, and, uh, you know men mortality rate male mortality rate is very high and this is uh, you know happiness that we have this opportunity that people come in the park for example and they can just check their uh, health it takes uh, 40 minutes only for this medical examination in the park and we want uh, um, to become your partners and we also become we can also help you uh, to improve your health uh, so but the question uh, this was the question um, was to me i can answer differently of course on the one hand that's good but also there is a very interesting analysis and also there is a book which was published uh, and this is the book of of uh, gerda gigerenza a german scientist uh, a german scientist but i think uh, so uh, so wisdom of risk uh, this is the name uh, gigerensk analyzed uh, whether it's uh, a real uh, whether it's uh, really useful uh, to uh, scan all this uh, on uh, markers, um, you know. Uh, so of course, uh, this scanning also ha can have some right diagnosis or maybe also some false alarm diagnosis. Uh, a person does not have a cancer, but it's uh, diag but uh, it has this diagnosis um, and his ch whole life changes. Um, and in this book, there is a brilliant analysis of this, uh, and this analysis uh, gives us conclusions that this total screening of all people, uh, you know, at early stages without some indications, uh, uh, you know, gives more negative consequences than positive consequences. It's better to do this uh, research when uh, uh, there are already some indications. Then you can examine a person, and it's much better. And if you screen uh, everybody, uh, you know, 
know, and there are some mistakes, of course, some false uh, alarm, some uh, false uh, you know, alarms. Uh, so this uh, total uh, benefit uh, is less uh, than harm. Thank you very much. I would like. Uh, uh, to thank Moscow government for this great initiative uh, uh, to check this um, health. And I think this forum also is a great contribution. But if we speak uh, generally about kindness, of course, uh, here we should be more thoughtful. Our discussion is going to an end. Uh, and uh, so our main conclusion uh, here is um, uh, that uh, what we have, it's already happiness. Uh, and, I you know, irrespective whether our wishes come true or not. And if suddenly our wishes uh, do not come true and we cannot feel happiness and gratitude for what we have, let's uh, use it like a motivation. Thank you very much. Спасибо. Хорошо, спасибо.